So uh, like everyone said, uh, today my talk is around um, you want DevOps, but how do I justify it? Um, we've done a number of DevOps implementations here with, at Forest Technologies. We've done this with a number of clients, and we started to see a lot of trends, uh, and we've started to see the reasons why. But what we don't really get to is how do I actually justify? How do I tell my business I actually want to do this? Okay. So first off, a little bit of who I am. So uh, yeah, Jason Mann, I'm a DevOps practice lead here at Forest Technologies. Um, I've worked in the IT industry for just under 10 years now. Uh, started my way in EDS, uh, then that was purchased by HP Enterprise, uh, Enterprise Services. Uh, but really, I was working on a single account. That single account being the Royal Air Force. And the Royal Air Force being um, airworthiness, they required a very strict environment, uh, much like the banks that we've been into. Um, but it got to the point where everything was restricted. You know, you couldn't do a check-in without a change request. You couldn't uh, deploy anything into production without a change control board. Uh, all the validations, and then you know, having a um, a design authority sign off every single change. Um, so, from my perspective, that gave me a very good. Um, start to my uh, IT career because you know if you can work in the strictest environment you can understand pretty much why everyone needs to do certain parts of it. <coughs> so then I moved to Forest Technologies and I've been there for just under five years now um, and that kind of opened my mind to things you know um, when you work to one organization you can see how they operate but then when you work in different cultures different areas um, you start seeing a trend, different ways of people working, okay, where you work in Asia Pac, you know, it's very different uh, culture that you start with. Uh, when you work in the US, again, they, they're very um, opinionated around how you want to do certain things. So from my perspective, you know, I've learned a great deal working at a number of these different uh, organizations, including one in Ecuador. Um, that was a really fun trip for myself. So you know we've we've had a, a, a very wide variety of work that we actually uh, do here at Forest Technologies. But you know I'm going to set a barrier before we we start the talk, right? So Singapore DevOps it's happening right now. Okay, I have uh, spent a little bit of time researching um, uh, the the Singapore Ed region. You know I'm from the UK, came here last night, so it's still about 3 a.m. for me. Um, but 81%, that's a very, very high number. They're looking to adopt a DevOps strategy or they already have something in place. So this could be a DevOps initiative. This could be a digital transformation program. This could be an innovation project. However way you want to measure it, I think it very much takes you towards a, a, a DevOps strategy that you're moving towards. Okay? And then when I started to look through you know, the reasons why people want to adopt this, okay, Around all of this is time spent um, fixing and maintaining applications. That's one of the main reasons why they want to adopt this. It's quality. So when I look at this, it's all around quality. It's all around speed and consistency. So whenever we come up with a solution with our customers, that's the thing we look at first. The other thing why, why people want to adopt DevOps is around collaboration. You know, um, Brett already talked around the cultural piece earlier on. I, I will cover a couple things that, that do cross over uh, a little bit, but you know, organizations here are um, a bit more lean, a bit more strict around how you, you operate. Yeah? So here we want to adopt a more you know, uh, cross-functional team type cu culture, but how do we get to that? And finally, it's then the availability on platforms. Why? You know, everyone is moving towards a different set. You know, people are uh, more accessible. I can see people in the crowd right now, you know, using their phones. I'm sure you're looking at work emails or, or going on Twitter because, you know, we all like to do that here. All right, so being able to have access to your uh, product. So that kind of takes me on to, you know, why do we need to do DevOps? You know, from my perspective, it's all about innovation, okay? So I've got a couple of examples here that, for me, it's, it really strikes us of why we need to do it. So traditional bank branches. Um, I don't know about you, but I can't remember the last time I went to a, a branch, uh, an actual physical bank branch. 
There's everything I need to do with my accounts, I can manage on my phone now. Um, I don't have to have that much money, but you know, it's, it's very much the, the idea of consumeration of IT right now. You know, it's becoming more and more easily accessible for us at our fingertips, through our mobile phones, through our tablets. I'm able to access my, uh, my, my um, banking information. And, you know, a few years back, I couldn't do this. A few years back, I couldn't even transfer something to another person. But right now, uh, I'm not sure if it's available here, but right now in the UK, I can take someone's phone number and I can send you money. Okay, think about that just five years ago. I don't think that's even possible. Okay, so the, able, the ability for me to be able to transfer this so quickly is it's why we need innovation. Another example, um, I think it's a bit more restrictive here, but in the UK we have a number of uh, gambling branches or, or betting shops, as we call them, or bookies. Literally, these shops were designed so you would walk in there, tell someone at the counter, I want to place a bet on Man United winning the Champions League this year. That's all they did. Okay? This was a real key, key area that we found that innovation happened. Okay? More so in play betting. Me as a consumer, I am addicted to uh, you know, sports, so I like to gamble every so often. And in play betting was a game changer for me. Being able to say, actually, my team's not doing very well today, or you know, someone just got sent off, I'm going to just cash out right now. And this benefits both sides, the consumer and the business. In the consumer, I'm getting my money back, or at least some of my money back. But for the business, they make a bit of money as well, because actually, at the end of the day, potentially, they, they might win on that bet anyway, so they don't have to pay out as much. So there's a real need in innovation here, you know. It shows that IT now is, is really moving forward. And to really name a few that are out there that are doing this really, really well. Uber, they're the largest uh, cab company. You know, cabs have been around for decades, ever since cars have been uh, invented. But they're now the company that owns the most taxi or, or cab drivers, but they don't own a single car. And it's all this is around software. It's all around IT for them. Airbnb. Uh, so the most recent stat I found with them, 1.5 million listings in uh, 34,000 cities. That's larger than any hotel chain in the world. And they don't own a single room. Okay? All around the IT, all around the business model. Uh, Monzo or Mondo, it's a UK bank. It's, it's all built around... Um, it's... It's been around for just under two years now. We've got hundreds of thousands of uh, clients, and they're starting to be a disruptor. They're an online-only bank. They didn't start with mainframes. They started with newer technology, enabling them to be able to produce the features and, uh, and, uh, and functionality faster to their, to their end consumer. So then, why is it that we actually want to do this? Okay, um, a lot of people start looking at DevOps at a tooling level. And I'm trying to stay away from any tool, men mentioning any tools here today. But firstly, you've got to start establishing the why. Like I said, very much so we want to look at the business level. What is it that the business is trying to achieve? Because I can guarantee you, if you go to your, uh, your budget holder and say, I need $100,000 to do DevOps. I guarantee you, you can just turn around and, and get a no very, very quickly. So we need to start understanding why it is that the business wants to achieve what it needs to do. So one of the very good sayings that I like to use when we do this is um, people don't want to buy a quarter-inch drill. They want a quarter-inch hole. Okay, and this is what, in our sense, you know, DevOps is our drill. Our business success and our value is the whole that we're trying to achieve. Not a single person out there wants a drill. Yeah, everyone wants the end result. So when we're looking to adopt, you know, whether it's cloud, cloud technology or container technology, what is it that we're actually trying to achieve as a result of this? Okay? As a business, I, wouldn't, I couldn't care less. My business can still release, my business can still make money. 
So how can you turn my talk into a bit more of a, a, tech, a business talk so you can justify why we're actually trying to do DevOps? So, you know, hopefully everyone's seen this kind of image before. Um, you know, when we traditionally came up with the, the term DevOps, it was around developers and operations. Developers are always driving for change. Operations is looking for stability. These are um, negative forces against each other in a traditional sense. But more so, what we're looking at is how does actually, how do we involve the entire business? So you may have heard of newer terms like DevSecOps or DevQAOps or DevQADBA uh, release, whatever ops, right? But what we're trying to do, that the term itself, what it means is we want to try involve more people inside the organization to do this. It's, it's about the entire business. It's about making sure we understand what it is our roles are within this business, okay? DevOps engineers, it can mean anything. Overnight, sysadmins become DevOps engineers. Overnight, developers become DevOps engineers. But what we're trying to say is, actually, these guys still have a role in the business. It's do I understand how my handoff between one, organized, one team to another team works? Okay, if I have a defined role and a defined responsibility, I can still have a DevOps initiative. Okay? Um, full stack developers is another, another way to define this. Everyone's now becoming a full stack developer. And I think, from my perspective, we're starting to see these kind of roles. A real, you know, developers doing development uh, on you know, front end, back end databases. These are starting to get washed out. These roles are starting to get washed out because everyone wants to be a full stack developer. Okay, and that's, to me, that's not what, what we mean when we say everyone has a defined role or responsibility. So, actually, what we typically then see is people want to start looking at high-performing organizations. So HPO has been around for a very, very long time. Um, I actually started uh, and, and heard about this when I was working in HP uh, somewhere about six, seven years ago. Um, so we started adopting Agile, and as a result of this, we wanted to be a HPO. But HBO, you know, it, there's real value in it because they've done some research. It's almost time, whenever you see a HPO organization, it's almost twice as effective as, as low-performing organizations. And this is all, isn't due to the technology they've got. And this is all due to the culture that they've got set up. It's all, all due to the way that their, their roles have been established and the way that they've been led, yeah? not managed. Okay? We don't like managers, we like leaders. So everyone needs to be able to lead by example, for example. So when we look at people side, when we look at the culture, you know, we talk about DevOps as around people, process, and toolings, or a mixture of different, different things. But when we look at people, we can see here, it's all about having the right people in the right place, knowing their right roles, okay? In this particular example, F1 cars, pit stops, they've gotten down to the point of two and a half seconds to do a pit stop with 30 plus people. Okay? I challenge you right now, I couldn't get 30 people in here right now and do exactly the same thing. Okay? It's an evolving process. It's something that we need to work. You know, F1 cars have been around for a very long time. It hasn't been two and a half seconds all, this, all, all the time. With, they've slowly evolved and understood their process as they do it. And for us, this, for me, this is a real clear example of people working together in the right way. So next thing is just we want to bring everyone into the DevOps circle, OK? We have a number of initiatives when we look at DevOps. When we go and actually go speak to our customers, they've had some pilots, they've done some MVPs, they've done some work on a DevOps, uh, DevOps project. But then they, they realize something's not right. So from our perspective, we want to get everyone involved. When we, whenever we analyze this, we actually find one of the key problems is that not everyone is involved. They don't have the key stakeholders in place. Okay? A very clear and easy example to use here, developers have started to use containers. They want to put that into production. Our sysadmin or our ops engineers have no idea what a container is. They have no idea how it runs. 
You know, if we're using Docker, they have no idea what the Docker engine is. They don't understand, you know, what is a container? How is it different from a VM? And so, therefore, they become new bottlenecks. And actually, then, uh, then the initiative fails. And the other one that we see is, very often, it's pockets of innovation. Every organization will have groups of people that are always driving for change, always driving for newer things to happen. You know, they see the latest new tool that's come out, um, and they want to use it. But the problem with that is that they leave everyone else behind. And then actually, you've created your own silo within a silo. OK? So make sure you get involved. Bring our dinosaur back into our circle. OK? So a really good quote that I like to use. I like Elon Musk. Failure is an option here. If things are not failing, you are not innovating enough. OK? Everyone needs to start looking at that mentality. Um, you know, in the culture aspect, it's something that evolves. You can't do this overnight. Okay, we've had cultural um, initiatives that have lasted 18 months, two years, three years. You know, it's not overnight. And, and people, human behavior is one of the hardest things to change. You know, so I think in this case. Here, you can see very successful people, people like Elon Musk. You know, you, what you see is, yes, they built Tesla, or yes, they've done SpaceX. But what you don't see is the failure, the effort, and the hard work they also put in. Okay? I've read tons of articles about him. You know, he you know, sleeps in the office, doesn't really leave the office, works 24 hours. You, know, you don't see the effort that he puts in, but he also builds a culture. Um, another saying you hear when you, know, when you go to NASA, you go to the, the, the cleaners out there, what, what is it that your role, what's your role? You know, and they answer you, my role is to put a man on the moon. You know, it doesn't matter, everyone is aligned in what they're trying to do. So the next thing I, I started looking at was barriers to adoption. So in, this is specific to Singapore, this isn't specific to you know, UK or Europe or US. Why is it people don't want to adopt DevOps. What is the reason behind this? Um, slightly biggest chunk there, like all businesses, I want to know what my ROI is. What is my return on investment if I'm going to do DevOps? Okay, that seems to be the biggest barrier here in Singapore. Um, and it is, because typically DevOps is hard to measure in terms of what your ROI is, because there are a, a number of intangible benefits um, around that. You've got Things like an improved cu culture, improved productivity. This, this can't be measured through RI. Okay? But there are ideas, and I'll show you a, a very quick calculation that we can make later on just to start producing our RI. The other two areas that you know, stop us from um, adopting DevOps is around uh, organizational complexities, layers upon layers upon layers upon layers of management, I'd say. So that makes it very difficult. Um, you know, it's, it's an earlier tour. Someone said, you know, when you're in Japan, they said they didn't want to do DevOps, but this year they do. So we can start seeing change there. Um, and roles and responsibilities, you know, everyone wears multiple hats. Everyone has a lot of roles that they currently do. So when they do this, they don't know how this splits up. How do, how do I make sure that our whole entire organization is able to produce and, and give ourselves business, business value? So before I go into the business case side of things, I just want to share with you what I think is five very quick, easy wins. Okay? When you're trying to adopt DevOps, there's things that we can do with minimal effort, and I would say without any sort of business input, that you can start showing the benefits of what you can do. And I think anyone can do this. All right? First of all, sharing sessions. Obviously, these events happen. Um, you know, it shouldn't be once a year that we start holding open spaces. You should have these internally all the time. Okay? It's building up um, a culture within your organization, but it's also starting to share what you're doing. What are you doing well right now? You know, whether it's a brown bag session or lunch and learns, these things are really critical to start understanding what your organization is doing. Because I bet you, you, know, you guys are all doing really clever stuff right now, but I bet you other parts of your organization have no idea what you're doing. 
Next thing we want to start doing is start convincing. We want to start turning our tech talk into business talk. I'm going to show you an example of this in a, bit, in a little bit. But what I don't want to tell my company is I want to adopt containers because everyone's doing containers right now. Yeah, that's the biggest trend in IT right now, so we should do it. Businesses don't care about that. Businesses have, at a, you know, from me, my perspective, if I was told that, I'd say, so what? You're delivering stuff right now. You see no benefit. Okay, faster? Oh well, you're more likely going to make a mistake because every production deploy right now ends up, ends up as a catastrophic event. So if you want to do this more often, I don't want to. I don't want to spend more weekends doing this, right? So we want to start taking away from that, and we want to start turning that into business talk. What is the business benefit I'm going to gain from this? Another very, very quick win. Um, question a process. Okay, um, you know we've got developers, and we've got ops here, and we've got a wide-ranging variety of roles here. But always question why. Why is it that I need to do something? Why is it that I need to write a ten-page document for a two-line change in my code? Why is it that in order to provision a new server, I need to spend two weeks writing up my business justification around this? Okay? What I'm saying here is, is understanding the business reason behind this. What I'm not saying is you go and have an argument with your manager. Okay? That isn't questioning a process. Arguing your manager doesn't get you anywhere. I can, I can tell you that straight away. Um, but where we're trying to build and understand business reason. Because sometimes, well actually most of the times, we get an answer when we ask this because it's the way it is. Because this is the way it's always been done. You know, IT is moving, IT is evolving. So if it is evolving, you know, these processes should also be evolving. We shouldn't have a process that was done three years ago still doing, still doing it today. Definition of done is always another way that we want to make sure that you you clarify, you know, we go to organizations, we go to developers all the time. What do you mean by definition of done? I've written my code, I've checked it in. That is not a definition of done. You know, we need to make sure, you know, our ticketing systems are updated. We need to make sure we've handed over correctly. But most importantly, we want to make sure our service is in production. So what if I've written 10 features in the space of Two sprints, it's pointless if it doesn't actually end up to your end consumer. So trialing new tools is always another thing, you know, Adrian just talked about Zipkin, I've never heard about it, so I'm going to go back and have a look around it, and I'm going to understand it. You know, last year when we was doing a lot of these talks in, in, in all over the world, you know, we was talking to our customers and saying, we want to start shifting left, we want to do more testing earlier on, we want to do our security testing earlier on. A slightly changed this year. I think this year is all around taking risks. It's all about trying things and doing it. Okay? So, you know, remember my quote about, you know, you've got to learn to fail, fail fast. So from my perspective, if it breaks, it breaks. Who cares? But if it doesn't break, you're gonna start profiting from some of these changes that you've made. Okay, immediately, because you've started trialing these tools. And you can start showing the benefits to your business as to why you're doing it. So then, when you start looking at your business case, when you start saying to your manager or your leader, why is it that I need to do this? Firstly, you need to define a goal. What is it that you're trying to achieve? Okay, when I say that, we want to look at a business goal. How can I double the amount of customers to my product? How can I ensure that I can release faster so that your consumer can get new features quicker or your time to market. We could just start defining that. But the second thing is you've got to work out your TCO, which is your total cost of ownership. Okay? There's no business case unless you can figure out what your spend is. Okay? No 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 point in that. So in this case we want to start looking at what our setup costs are, what our software costs. You know, everyone's using open source stuff, but actually then you realize there's an enterprise version that you can get that your business will most likely need because you need security, because you need RBAC, because you need high availability, and so forth. Then there's operating costs. Cloud servers, they cost you money. 
physical servers, they also cost you money. How much does it cost for me to run this piece of software? Finally, resourcing is really important. A lot of people buy new tools, and we realize a lot of people don't consider that you actually need to do stuff with it. Okay, you, you need to configure it, you need to set it up, you need to actually make it work. A tool doesn't solve anything in your business unless you've configured it the right way. So we start looking at a total cost in this case. You know, AWS is a really easy way to figure out a total cost because you know what your hardware costs right now, where your data center costs, and then with AWS it's a really good uh, return, again, depending on how much you're doing. And then we can start looking at our ROI. Yeah. So in this case, you know, we've got our investment, our reinvestment as well, because you know, it's all about continuous, it's all about feedback, start small, think big. Then we've got to start looking at how much savings we made, the profits we're, we're going to gain from this, and then our productivity. But then overall as well, you've got your intangible benefits. Like I said earlier, innovation, the culture, productivity, you can't measure this. So these are still things that you can start building upon your, uh, upon your business case to really show why you want to do this. So different things that we start looking at when we build our business cases. Um, you want to start looking at investment in build, test, deploy, and provisioning. Uh, that is the single biggest item of, um, or area or practice that people pick up, or continuous delivery. Because most people have manual deployment processes right now. And so we actually see that as the biggest return people have taken. Um, investment in IT infrastructure, you know, configuration management tools, uh, like your puppets out there. You know, most people do. Sysadmins manually create your servers. Then it's investment in people. Okay? A lot of people fail to understand this. Just because one person knows how to use a tool like Puppet doesn't mean everyone else knows. Okay? So there's need a need for education, a need for training to invest and ensure that you get the bigger saving. You know, in my case, what is the point of having a Ferrari or a Lamborghini if you don't know how to drive it? I can look cool at it. I'd say I'd pick up girls, but I, I don't, can't do that anymore. Um, but you know, that's, that's the sense. No point having shiny things if you don't know how to use it. Investment in organizational change. You know, we need to understand what it is that our organization is trying to achieve. And if we've got 10 layers in front of me blocking every single way or, or providing a bottleneck, that's not helping me achieve my goals. And when we start talking to our CIOs, our, our directors that hold our budgets, they're always telling me, I want more, but I can't give you more budget. So I want more for less. Um, that's a frustrating method for me. Yeah, I don't like that. But understandably, we need to start working smarter. And this is where some of the tools, um, like our HashiCorp tools, like the Terraforms and the Vaults, all of that start giving you some of that benefit because it helps you increase the speed, helps you work smarter, not work harder, because there's only so many hours in a day. And then the other thing that we need to consider is to slow down before you can speed up. Okay? When we looked at Agile, when we adopted Agile, this was a very big, big item. Okay? You've got to slow down to speed up, because if you keep going faster, you're more than likely going to hit a limit, and you're more than likely going to break. Okay, so, so, so we need to understand the full process. Um, I think I'm running over time a little bit, so I'll be very quick. Um, so the next thing, you know, I talked about turning business talk to tech talk, uh, tech talk to business talk, sorry. Here, it's a very good example. I want to increase my deployment frequency. What's the point of doing that? So for my tech people, smaller changes are easier to manage. If it happens every day or every other day, I can remember when I made the change. I can remember why I did the change. Um, but then when we look at the business side of talks, shorter release cycles means faster features going out, which means customers are able to get out of it, which means you're going to get more business and hopefully more customers. So you've got a shorter time to market, which ultimately means more profit. Here you can see faster release cycles, earlier chance to uh, generate income. So we do a lot of these talks. Um, I do a lot of these talks. I've, I've sat in your position. I understand. I sit there. But actually, I want to set a challenge for you guys. You know, I want you guys to go back and do something with this. Okay? 
So first off, go back and go question the process. Remember, not have an argument, question. Secondly, map out your entire application lifecycle. Why? Because you start involving people. And actually, we want to see how we go from requirement into production. You know, hands up here, who, can, who actually can tell me exactly how you can go from produ uh, requirement into production? Do you know every single step of the way? Anyone? Two. It's a very, very small amount. And this is the biggest change that we see when we do this in our workshop sessions. People actually say, this is the first time I know what's involved. How does a requirement get cr gets created? How does it get accepted? And so forth. And finally, share some experience. You know, I've had a few conversations already. Obviously, I was preparing for the talk, but you know, I want to have more conversations later on. I want to understand what you guys are doing, how you guys are doing it, and, and you know, the success stories that I want to hear. I want to see how you guys are doing it, but most importantly, we're going to start sharing. Do I have a few more minutes? Yes, no? No? OK. <laughs> Anyway, so I've run out of time. Um, I did have a very quick case study that I wanted to show you. It was around a legacy monolithic system out of a large retail bank. Um, we used a number of old, old, old uh, tech that we managed to help them automate and use to their DevOps initiative. Um, unfortunately, I have run out of time and I talk too much. I really apologize for that. However, please come outside. I'm going to be there all day. Come have, a, uh, have a, a chat with me and we can really talk around that. And I'm going to very, very quickly do a summary. <laughs> um, so obviously, from our perspective, you know, there's five very key points that you need to understand when we want to start justifying why we need to do two DevOps. Okay? First off, innovation, really important. Without innovating, you're not going to be ahead of your, your, um, your competitors. You establish why you're trying to do this. Why do I need to do DevOps? Why does the business need to do it? What business benefits are there? Fostering the right culture, you know, every talk, you know, most of the DevOps talks today will, will I bet you, will talk around culture. You know, Brett did, um, Adrian's done that, even Mitchell did it this morning. Everyone will talk about culture, so you see that the importance on that. Start small, think big, don't try and achieve everything in one go. It's all about pockets of innovation. We want to start building those and, 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 uh, and passing this into our organization. And most of all, remember it's a journey. And remember it's a story. Every journey, every story has its ups and downs, its bumps and bruises. But hopefully for your organization, you will find the right way to do it the best as uh, you can. Um, I clearly don't have any Q&A. So again, come out and speak to me. Uh, we're, I'm here for the rest of the day and tomorrow. Well, thank you very much.